Joining us now, News for Jack's crime and safety analyst, Gil Smith. Good morning to you, Gil. Good morning. Uh, you know, we've seen time and time again, even dating back, let's say, to Lonzi Barton, the longer the time passes, the worse the possibility of a positive outcome. And sadly, we saw this in the last couple of days and unfold as we learned just last night. That's right, Jennifer, especially in this case where Murray was the only person involved. So it wasn't a chance where someone may, he may have held him hostage somewhere for ransom and other people were watching. With him being the only person, uh, there's a better chance that, you know, he did die early on in this case. As we learned, of course, <clears throat> he died on Sunday night. That's according to Sheriff Shore. Uh, why not prosecute him in St. John's County? Well, I do have some charges here in Duval and in St. John's County. Uh, fleeing and attempting to elude in Duval, St. John's County. You might have had the auto theft or some other crimes. But since he may have died in Georgia, they're going to prosecute first where the most serious crime occurred. It appears that he did die in Georgia, so that's where they're going to prosecute. So it's interesting, as we actually just heard, and this is video, by the way, of Stephen Murray, um, who, when he made his first court appearance in Aiken, South Carolina, after he was caught um, basically very early in the morning last Thursday, uh, you know, we heard Ashley mention that there are five investigators from St. John's County that are in Augusta, Georgia, or in Burke County, I should say, right now. What will be their focus then, considering the fact that, that they won't be be helping well they'll be helping in the prosecution of obviously assuming that there is an indictment on first degree murder but since this is not really their case now at this point right at some point a murder is going to be extradited back to georgia but what prosecutors are doing there is to get as much information as they can about what occurred there in georgia also they want to share information with the law enforcement authorities in georgia uh, maybe information about the crime scene that was there in st john's county mm -hmm. information about the chase and also information in reference to the interviews that were conducted in St. John's County involving Murray, because I believe there are like two or three different sets of interviews that would have, uh, would be very useful uh, to the people in Georgia as far as filing charges. Yeah, it's interesting because this is somewhat unusual because this this crime appears to have spanned all the way from St. John's County up to Aiken. You had, of course, the, the, the fleeing police in Jacksonville and Duval County, whatever happened in St. John's County, which is where Father Rene lived. Then you have, you know, the fact that his body was found in Augusta and then also in Aiken, South Carolina. How important is it that these, these departments obviously share information since you have evidence basically strewn over a large large area, you know, crossing several borders. It's crucial that they are able to communicate, and they do that quite well, especially since 9-11 when there were some serious problems around the country with different law enforcement agencies communing with, communicating with each other. And that's changed a lot since 9-11. Now, um, police departments um, actively communicate within, especially with close jurisdictions, Duval, Clay, and St. John's, but also across state lines, they communicate very well. So they'll be able to share information, still try to piece together exactly what happened, because it's not, the case is not complete yet, even though he did uh, admit to committing the crime. Now it's a matter of figuring out the timeline, you know, when these events actually occurred, what was going on when he was traveling back and forth from Georgia to to Jacksonville. So there's still a bit of work to be done. Yeah, and, and, and more, quite frankly, answers to questions that we just don't know at this point in terms of establishing that timeline, and hopefully we'll learn that over the next couple of days. Gil, thank you very much for your insight. I do appreciate it this morning.